So how do you find your unique voice on the guitar? How do you develop your own unique playing style? Well, these days that's pretty hard because there's so many videos out there of people basically playing in the same way. We used to have little groups of people around the world, right? Those people in, you know, Seattle developed the grunge kind of style and then people over here because we were, we were isolated, right? So the kind of groups of people could develop stuff here and then all you had was no internet, right? A phone that you had in your house. You didn't have a phone that you could, you know, so you were kind of in little bubbles around the world that people could influence each other and develop something unique. And then suddenly that trended, right? It wasn't a thing called that at that time, but then different styles of music arose and different guitarists came out with really different playing styles. Uh, so, but that's not, you know, everybody hears the same music, everybody has access to the same information. It's basically one bubble, that's the planet Earth, one village, the global village, right? So, but what is your personal playing style? What is your personal style? Well, it really is your personal preferences. And normal, you know, normal people, <laughs> that's not us because we play guitar. People who don't play an instrument and don't improvise and don't play solos uh, or don't play rhythm guitar, those people don't develop any preferences on the instrument. They just have musical preferences. They like a style of music. Then underneath that, they like particular bands within that style of music. Those are their personal preferences, personal. But you develop your own personal preferences when it comes to notes, when it comes to licks, when it comes to chords or chord progressions, right? So the more you learn, the better you become, the more preferences you has, have as to what, what notes you like over a chord. I like the ninth over any, like over any other chord. I just love that sound, right? Uh, I love the, the C major seven, that chord. I like that better than I like um, a minor seven, right? I like this better, right? So just these little preferences. Normal people don't have preferences like that or they don't know they have them, right? So as you become better, as you improvise, as you learn more skills and tools or, or as you spend more time improvising with the, the good old uh, pentatonic and as you develop and listen and, and adapt to things, gradually you develop your own playing style, right? because that's what you do. But since everybody is looking at the same videos and the same licks and the same everything, then everybody develops a kind of a similar playing style. So what is the solution to that? It is to limit yourself a little bit, right? Instead of watching a ton of YouTube videos and listening to a ton of music, then be selective. What exactly do you like out here that is way better than anything else? Right? And you know, maybe you want to practice instead of watching so many YouTube videos. <laughs> right? and, and you want to be acutely sensitive to what you really like when you solo. And when you hear a solo, instead of going, hey, I want to learn that solo, that's a cool solo, eh, don't do that. It takes forever and it's the worst thing you can do to develop your... If you think it's fun, all, all good for you, right? But if you want to develop your skills, you want to take bits and pieces. So every time you have a solo in front of you, Pick out the number one phrase that you absolutely love. And once you have that phrase down, what about that phrase do you love so much? Well, I don't know. Well, if you have just a basic uh, understanding of music theory, you can start saying... I like that, that lick a lot. Why do I like that blues lick so much? because the six is in there, the Dorian six, right? Okay, that's a realization, right? Maybe you like the kind of the feel of it, the tempo, the phrase, you know, you pick it apart using every concept you have in your head and say, put words to why I like it, right? I like it because I love that. Sound way well, on. Let me design a, a pentatonic scale that uses the six instead of the seven. Let's add, let's add the blue note. Right? Voila! You went from a lick and you went from identify, you went from a solo 
You took out a link, ah, there's something special about that little line there. You learned it and then you analyzed, why do I like it so much? What is it about this link? And then you can take that concept that you come up with and then you can say, okay, let me use that in another context. Let me develop my own links that uses those elements that I like so much. See, this is the intelligent way of going about it. And this will absolutely make your unique preferences as to what you ex like exactly. Whenever you hear a song that has just those two notes that, that you go, oh, what is that, right? You, you listen to that song and you do not stop before you have a, an explanation in words or music theory that you can, that you can, you know, so, so, and that's why music theory is so valuable because now you can actually explain to yourself what it is that you like and you can reproduce that, that really cool feeling or sound in that lick, that line, that melody, that song in, in what you do here. So that's what we use music theory for most of the time is to kind of explain instead of just, you know, I don't know what happened, just sounded awesome, right? Um, so for instance, if I have a, a, a minor uh, triad arpeggio, like, I really like that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I also like the, the minor chord like that, right? That sounds nice. But I like the, uh, the minor chord with the raised seven even better. I just love that sound. All right, so this is a minor. This is the minor seventh with the sharp seventh. Didn't do it. But the arpeggio, man, that's really. So that, I really like that around uh, the minor triad, but I also like another note very much, and that's the ninth. I just dig that. So if I take a chord and I play a minor chord, and then I add the ninth, this is a sus nine, by the way, because I drop the, the, the third and make it a ninth. I could also go for uh, an A minor ninth. Right? Oh, love that sound. So I can use that in an arpeggio. I can go for minor, right? And then I can go for an A minor with the ninth in it. Oh, I love that. And then I can add the raised seventh, right? One semitone below the root note. Now I actually went from having an arpeggio with three notes to having five notes, which is the same thing that is in the pentatonic scale. So now I have a whole scale that I can... Right? So, so because I knew that that was the ninth, right? Or what is that chord, you know, uh, or the raised seventh? Or, you know, I hear it and I go, what is that chord? It sounds really great. And then I can apply music theory and then I can both play arpeggios like that, I can play a chord like that. I hope you get my point here. So that's the way to develop your own unique playing style. You might hear something that B.B. King play, right? So he went... What is that? What is that vibrato? That vibrato is as fast as he can do it. And it's not a controlled vibrato because I would go... Or... Or... Right? It's all controlled. I can take a metronome... Way, 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 way. When, 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 right? But when I do this, I just go as fast as I can. Right? How do you do that? You develop the technique to do it. You look at, right? It's different with your first finger than it is with your third finger. Right? That's that kind of, it's almost anxious, right? And then I like that pull off. Right? It's still in right? So I have a pull off. Well, how can I use that? Right? You can use that in other contexts as well. I really like that. So don't practice solos. Pick and choose and pick and choose every way. Right? Don't practice whole songs either. Just pick and choose whatever. Right? It might be in another genre than you're usually interested in. It might be a pop song, a rock song, a jazz song. But whenever something stands out, that's your style. That's your personal preferences. That's what becomes out. And that's what's uniquely you.
You don't want to try and develop an artificial personal style. Why would you do that? Right? You want to ask this and this what you like. And you do that by really trying to pick and choose from everything that stands out because it stands out to you. And that's how your personal uh, preferences comes out. That's why you are your individual you on a musical level. Don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, it helps me out, even though you don't need to. <laughs> and then uh, go check out some of the other videos. Thank you.